our next talk is on dopamine as the preferred agent, and that's vasopressor agent for cardiogenic shock. Hello. Uh, welcome to my Mythbusters. As Dr. Freed mentioned, dopamine is the preferred agent for cardiogenic shock. Um, so how would you define cardiogenic shock? There's no uniform definition, but there are some uh, parameters that are generally agreed upon. One of them is persistent hypotension. So you have a systolic blood pressure less than 90. You have a severe reduction in cardiac index. And so that would mean your cardiac index is less than 1.8 without inotropic or vasopressor support. And it's uh, less than 2.2 with inotropic or vasopressor support and evidence of acute end organ damage and that is typically uh, referred to as decrease or increased creatinine and elevated lactate uh, you can have cool clammy skin um, sometimes you can have altered mental status and the most common etiology most common etiology of uh, cardiogenic shock is acute myocardial infarction with left ventricular failure, but you can have valvular etiology such as aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation, mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation. You can have uh, tamponade. Uh, you can also have bradycardia as a possibility. Um, and one of the important things to know about this topic is it carries a very high mortality rate. It carries a mortality rate of nearly 50%. And uh, as you'll see in this presentation, there's only a few things that we can do to help address the mortality related to cardiogenic shock. So what are your goals in cardiogenic shock? What can you do for this patient to try to help them out? In general, the hemodynamic profile is that you have a low cardiac index with markedly elevated systemic vascular resistance and elevated pulmonary wedge capillary pressure. So with that in mind, you can understand that your goal now is to try to improve the cardiac output to help restore the peripheral perfusion. Um, you want to reduce further coronary ischemia and avoid any additional reductions in contractility because that may further perpetuate the cycle that you're in. It's, uh, I've listed some of the most common pressors and inotropes that we use here. Dopamine is rather unique in that it can act on alpha receptors, beta receptors, and dopamine receptors to help increase cardiac output to avoid peripheral hypoperfusion, um, to increase coronary, or to reduce coronary ischemia. Uh, some of the other agents that we could potentially use, like norepinephrine, act uh, preferentially on the alpha receptors, but it also has some inotropic and chronotropic effects. Um, and there are some medications that we don't typically, or we can use, like dobutamine or milrinone, which are strong um, inotropic and chronotropic agents. And there's ones that we don't use here in the U United States, like levosimendin. They typically use that in more so in Europe. So as I had alluded to, dopamine, uh, at lower doses, it can work on the dopamine receptors to cause vasodilation of the coronary, renal, and splanchnic vessels. At intermediate doses, it can work um, on the beta receptors to uh, improve inotropic and chronotropic effects. And at high doses, it causes potent vasoconstriction on the alpha receptors. So theoretically, in patients with lower heart rates, dopamine can restore tissue perfusion and increase cardiac output. Um, and so it appears to be a magic drug for um, cardiogenic shock. This is one of the first articles I read on dopamine in cardiogenic shock. It was um, in 1973, and it was kind of an interesting study. They evaluated 24 patients with cardiogenic shock of various causes. And after they initially uh, corrected for hypovolemia, uh, they administered these patients dopamine. and they compared between the survivors and non-survivors non whether it had any impact in left ventricular filling pressures and uh, uh, urinary flow. And they found that in survivors who received dopamine, they had decreased left ventric ventricular filling pressures and augmented urinary flow. And the conclusion they come to, came to from this study is that dopamine is useful either alone or in conjunction with other pressor agents for the treatment of cardiogenic shock. This is a review later in 1973 in December um, that was submitted to, the, uh, to JAMA. Uh, 
and they reviewed the usage of dopamine in cardiogenic shock and I've included some of their quotes here. Um, dopamine, its most successful application has been in patients with cardiogenic shock. Dopamine can be used to increase systemic arterial pressure by stimulating the myocardium without compromising renal blood flow and urine output. Um, and dopamine may be superior to more conventional agents in cardiogenic shock. So if I had read this and I had Dr. Freed as my attending on, on the ICU, any patient with cardiogenic shock, I'm giving them dopamine. I mean, it seems to be a magic drug. Um, case closed. So this is the SOAP 2 trial. I think it was in 2011. It's one of the largest randomized controlled trials. Um, and they looked at, among patients with shock, how does dopamine compare to norepinephrine in decreasing mortality? And so they looked at 1,679 patients with mostly septic shock. Approximately 17% of these patients had cardiogenic shock, and they assigned them either norepinephrine or dopamine. And at approximately 28 days, um, there was no difference in all-cause mortality, but there was actually a higher rate of arrhythmias in the dopamine group. They had a 24.1% incidence of arrhythmias, whereas norepinephrine had only 12.4%. Uh, when they did a subgroup analysis, they found that a use of dopamine was associated with higher mortality in patients with cardiogenic shock. Um, but uh, it, they didn't, uh, the patients that they had with cardiogenic shock had a variety of hemodynamic profiles. They included obstructive etiologies, valvular etiologies, and post-cardiotomy post shock states. So it was difficult to characterize what type of cardiogenic shock they were in. Looking at the meta-analysis of dopamine and the usage of cardiogenic shock, this was a, a meta-analysis that looked at 2,478 patients with cardiogenic shock, and they evaluated mortality using multiple different agents, adrenaline, noradrenaline, vasopressin, milrinone, levosimendin, dobutamine, or dopamine. Um, and what they showed was uh, there was a positive trend uh, in the six studies with short-term mortality with levosimendin, but it was only a low level of evidence. Um, and in regards to dopamine, the pooled estimates showed there was no treatment effect for cardiogenic shock with dopamine, and there was no treatment effect on long-term mortality with uh, dopamine. So the conclusion that they came to is there's insufficient evidence that routinely used vasopressors and inotropes are associated with any mortality changes in patients with cardiogenic shock. This was another um, uh, meta-analysis that looked at 19 studies with 2,385 patients with cardiogenic shock or low cardiac output syndrome. Um, and they also compared different strategies, uh, levosimendin, norepinephrine, uh, milrinone, dopamine on short-term and long-term mortality. And they found that it was low to very low quality of evidence, but there's no convincing data supporting any specific inotrope or vasodilating therapy to reduce mortality in patients with cardiogenic shock or low cardiac output syndrome. So what role does dopamine have, if not in cardiogenic shock, uh, than in shock by itself? So this article reviewed the safety and efficacy of vasopressors, and it looked at dopamine which used to be a first-line vasopressor for septic shock. Uh, but they found that dopamine had greater adverse events. In fact, they cited the SOAP2 trial that I had referred to. And they found that you know, these patients had higher heart rate, higher tachyrhythmia. Um, and so um, it should be used in highly selected bradycardic patients only is what they suggested. In regards to cardiogenic shock, they, they suggested that dopamine is not recommended because of its greater if you're using it for its greater chronotropic effects. And like I mentioned, they cited the SOAP2 trial that found no benefits of low-dose dopamine versus placebo for its renal replacement rates, renal function, and mortality. So what does the American Heart Association say? Um, they say that if you have an acute coronary syndrome that's contributing to uh, your cardiogenic shock, then PCI or a cabbage uh, may help reduce mortality at six and, six and 12 months. But there's only few clinical outcome data available to help guide your selection of vasopressors with cardiogenic shock. 
In fact, norepinephrine is associated with fewer arrhythmias and actually might be the vasopressor of choice in many patients with cardiogenic shock. However, the first line still remains a little bit unclear. So when you're in the ICU and you have a patient with cardiogenic shock, how are you going to pick what helps guide your management? Um, the American Heart Association had a great table to help guide your management. Um, and so one of the few situations in which you would actually use dopamine is you have, if you have marked bradycardia, and so you would need a chronotropic agent or temporary pacing. Um, and dopamine, along with dobutamine or milrinone, can act as one of your agents in that situation. But for the most uh, part, norepinephrine seems to uh, be the first line treatment for cardiogenic shock. So um, as we had briefly talked about, cardiogenic shock carries a high mortality rate in excess of 50%. Um, it's, it doesn't change mortality, but invasive hemodynamics, uh, like a pulmonary artery catheter, can help guide management, though the trials haven't really shown a benefit. Uh, po positive inotropic agents have not shown any improved survival in these patients with cardiogenic shock. However, they can help you address end organ perfusion. There's no robust data to help suggest one inotrope or vasopressor over the other and that these are really only bridge therapies until they get more definitive management, such as heart transplant or LVAD. Um, and so these are my references. Um, anybody have any comments or <coughs> criticisms, questions, anything? Sounds like you convinced everybody. <laughs> so everyone's going to do dopamine, right? <laughs> With bradycardia. Yeah. With bradycardia. <laughs> um, all right. So if there aren't any other questions, this is what we're going to be voting on. Dopamine is the vasopressor of choice for cardiogenic shock. And yeah, I mean, I think you can just historically he showed you back in 73 that first article, um, and I think that's around not long after dopamine actually came out. And um, since that time, up until probably the last, I'd say five or six years, dopamine has been, or maybe through, maybe till the SOAP2 trial that he showed, which was 2010, 2011, so last 10 years. So for a almost 40 year period of time, dopamine was considered the drug of choice for cardiogenic shock, pretty much purely based on that one study of 24 patients. So this is how myths get started, right? And it took 40 years to do a study to show that it actually, those patients actually did worse than the SOAP2 study, the patients with cardiogenic shock with dopamine. And most of the recommendations now are all based on that study, which was a relatively small number when you look at the total number of patients. It was a fraction of those that actually had cardiogenic shock. But that was a predefined subgroup that they were going to analyze, so it wasn't like a post hoc analysis. They had planned on analyzing each of the types of shock separately as subgroups. So that's the best data we have. And um, I think the recommendations now are that unless they have a bradycardia, it's definitely not the drug of choice in cardiogenic shock. So, okay, that's my two cents, just to give you some perspective on everything. 40 years is a long time. Okay, um, so let's vote. So who thinks that this is a true statement? Dopamine is the vasopressor of choice for cardiogenic shock. How many think it's plausible? And how many think it's busted? Uh, again, it's pretty unanimous. All right. We're busted. <laughs>